All right, let's get into a real technical mystery here. Picture this. You're a sysadmin, you do a totally routine software update, head home for the night, and when you come back, a virtual machine has just stopped. I'm not talking crashed or halted, I mean it just silently froze in time. This is the story of how a brand new update kicked off a baffling nightly failure. And that's really the heart of this whole thing, isn't it? What happens when a VM just goes silent? This isn't your typical noisy crash where you get a screen full of error messages. No, this is something way weirder. We're talking about a machine that's technically still running, but is completely cut off from the outside world. It was basically a ghost in the machine. I mean, the VM's internal processes were totally frozen, you couldn't get a console to load, and any attempt to talk to it just timed out. It was as if the entire VM had just slipped behind a locked door, leaving absolutely zero clues about what went wrong. Okay, so let's set the scene for this midnight mystery freeze. You've got system administrators upgrading their servers from Proxmox VE8 to the shiny new version 9. Everything seems to go smoothly. But then, this strange and super frustrating repeatable problem starts to pop up, and it's happening specifically with their FreeBSD virtual machines. And a pattern started to emerge, and fast. On Proxmox 8, you know, everything was rock solid, no problems. But after the upgrade to Proxmox 9, it was like clockwork. Right around 11 p.m. every single night, when the automated backups kicked in, certain free BSD VMs would just freeze solid. This wasn't a random glitch. It was a nightly ritual of failure. So this is where we get our first real concrete clues. The system logs were basically screaming that QEMU, which is, you know, the very heart of the virtual machine, was completely and totally unresponsive. You had both the backup system and the host server trying to talk to the VM, and both of them were just met with, well, total silence. Okay, so now that the problem was starting to take shape, the real investigation began. The community jumped in and started trying to rule out all the usual suspects. You know, the first things you check when a VM starts acting up. But as they'd soon find out, this was no ordinary case. And this is where things got really frustrating. Was it a storage I.O. problem? Nope, the logs look totally normal. Maybe a networking issue? Ruled out. What about the storage backend itself? People moved VMs from Ceph to local storage, and the freeze still happened. They tried toggling every setting you could possibly think of. The guest agent, different CPU models, I.O. threads, and absolutely nothing worked. Every single lead just went cold. And then, just when everyone was convinced this was some kind of weird FreeBSD-only problem, a new report came in. Someone's SUS Linux virtual machine was showing the exact same symptoms. And that was a huge twist. It meant the root cause was something much deeper, much more fundamental than just one specific operating system. The hunt for the real culprit just got a whole lot harder. So the breakthrough finally came when people started looking deeper, connecting the dots between the logs on the Proxmox host and what was happening inside that silent guest OS. There was this hidden clue, a single breadcrumb that was about to link the backup failure on the outside to a very specific event on the inside. Now, before we get to that big clue, there's one little piece of tech we need to quickly get our heads around. It's called a SCSI request. Just think of it like a really simple message. It's the operating system talking to its hard drive and saying, hey, can you please read this piece of data for me? That's it. It's one of the most fundamental things computers do to access storage. And boom, this is the aha moment right here. On one side, you've got the host log showing the backup timing out, and on the other, the huge discovery from inside the guest. At the exact same time, the guest OS was canceling its own SCSI requests because it thought the virtual disk was taking way too long to respond. These two things weren't just related. They were happening in perfect, disastrous sync. So once that connection was made, the true culprit was finally unmasked. And it wasn't the storage, or the network, or even the operating system itself. No. It was a rare, subtle, and really nasty bug deep inside QEMU, the virtualization software. This bug was causing something called a deadlock, basically a situation where the whole program just freezes, waiting for something to happen that never will. So let's walk through this chain reaction step by step. First, the backup kicks off, and that causes a tiny bit of disk latency, a little delay. Second, the FreeBSD guest, which has really strict timing rules, gets impatient and just times out. Third, it sends an abort command to cancel that disk request it made. 
Fourth, QEMU gets with support command at the worst possible moment, right when it's busy managing the live backup snapshot. And then fifth, and this is the absolute key, a hidden bug in QEMU's code has no idea how to handle this exact sequence of events, so it just locks up completely, freezing the entire VM right along with it. All right, so with the root cause finally figured out, the big question was, what can we do right now to stop these nightly freezes? Well, the Proxmox team came through with a temporary workaround, something called fleecing, which became a total lifeline for all the affected admins. Fleecing is actually a really clever idea. See, instead of backing up the live disk directly, Proxmox creates a temporary scratch pad disk. All the heavy lifting of the backup happens on this temporary disk, which completely isolates the guest's actual active disk from all that I.O. pressure. And that little bit of separation was just enough to stop the initial timeout that was kicking off the whole bug in the first place. And you know what? It worked. The community quickly confirmed it. This quote here from a user really captures that sense of relief. The workaround was a success. It stopped the nightly freezes and bought the developers the time they needed to cook up a permanent patch for that QMU bug. But, you know, the real lesson here isn't just about what the bug was. It's about why it suddenly appeared out of nowhere. This wasn't some new bug that got introduced in Proxmox 9. No, this was a hidden, latent bug. One that had probably been sitting there in the code for a long, long time, just waiting for the perfect set of conditions to trigger it. And wow, what a perfect storm it turned out to be. You needed four separate things to line up just right. First, you needed FreeBSD's very specific and very strict timeout behavior. Then, you needed that pre-existing hidden bug in QEMU. Add to that the small amount of disk latency from a backup job. And finally, the last piece of the puzzle was the new software in Proxmox 9, which subtly tweaked the system's timing just enough to make this incredibly rare collision happen consistently night after night. You know, this whole story is just a powerful reminder of the incredible complexity that's hiding just under the surface of the tech we use every day. And it leaves us with this one fascinating, maybe slightly unsettling final question to think about. In this vast digital world we all depend on, how many other silent bugs are just sitting out there, dormant, just one single update away from causing their own perfect storm?